Is Bengaluru really a large water park? You know, there were a lot of memes and videos that made fun of us. But the trouble is, they were right. We are actually a large natural water park and one of the best designed ones in the world. I'm not talking about Wandala. I'm talking about the Bengaluru City Water Park. I'm dead serious. Let's take a deep dive and find out more. In this episode, I will show you a very cool app that you can play with. We'll go a little deeper to understand why certain parts of Bengaluru flooded. And at the end, we'll have some fun at the world's biggest city water park, or rather, city in a water park. But this is episode four. A lot of water has flowed under the bridge so far. So it probably helps to summarize where we are at this point. I know many of you are calling and writing to me and saying, but what's the solution? And my answer to you is, keep calm and worry on. Let's do the diagnosis first. Let's understand why it happens before we get to what to do next. You know, I have learned so much in the past week through talking to experts, reading whatever I can find and going around the Bengaluru tank network and the Mahadevpura floodplains on bike and by foot to see for myself. And I tried to transmit the same aha that I felt when I found something out to you. It is a complex, interconnected network problem we have here, literally from the cloud to the ocean. So let's give it the respect it deserves and allow me to unpack it slowly, one issue at a time, in a logical sequence, or at least what appears logical to me, so we can understand the why part first. After that, we can get to what next. In the first episode, we got some answers from the cloud on red versus blue. Raindrops whizzed from the 20th century high-tech highlands in the red zone down to the 21st century Silicon Valley or the blue zone or Mahadevpura, the valley of the great god. In episode 2, we saw how the entire area that corresponds to the current city of Bengaluru had over 800 kilometers of interconnected, cascading, man-made tanks, not lakes, at different elevations and whose chief role was to trap the rainwater, store it, use it for irrigation, allow it to drain out slowly, not too fast. Interestingly, Bangalore was an important center for AI from a long time. AI as an actual irrigation. Most important event of the year was the arrival of the monsoon or the rains, Malay. We liked the rain because we liked floods. In fact, irrigation is actually controlled flooding. It's a specialized skill, almost an art form. And we were famous for capturing every drop, the first and the last. You know what the first raindrops are called? Garumale was all about capturing the pre-monsoon rain, the first shower that changes the season from hot summer to the onset of the rains. We seem to have moved from catch the rain to send it down the drain. And in episode 3, we saw the impact of black on blue, how we have merrily built away in the floodplains below the flooding level. And so when there is heavy rain, which is not in our control, we get flooding in some areas, which is very much in our control. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's good or bad to construct in the floodplains. All I'm saying is that if you do, take adequate precautions. It's just common sense. I want to show you a really cool website. So just go to Google and log in Bengaluru Topographic Map and you get the result. Or you can go straight to topographic-map.com. It's an incredible map and this is what it is. You actually get to see Bengaluru. As you can see, it's all red. And basically, if you just click your mouse anywhere, you get the altitude above sea level. So I'm just clicking randomly and I get 949 meters. Let me zoom in a little bit. This is the high grounds area. This is 954, that's just off Makri Circle. That is the highest point in Bengaluru. 924, this is the entrance of Kabun Park. 926, Bangalore Cantonment Station. 928, Maleshwaram. 927, Bull Temple. Do you notice that all these important points are all about 920 meters? So if you just go back to an earlier time, literally they are the skyline of Bangalore. 
If you stand at Bull Temple, it's equally high as Kaban Park, it's equally high as Maleshwaram, and it's a little lower than what is today near Makri Circle. You get a sense of what the lay of the land was within the old city of Bengaluru and which are the high points. Now you know why Kempe Gowda built his towers at these high points. They were watchtowers, and from this height, you could literally see the entire land around, especially an advancing enemy. Now this was a real aha moment for me. We've always read that Kempe Gowda built his towers in the four cardinal directions, but I knew they were not in the four directions. And now it makes so much sense that if an army is advancing onto Bangalore, it walks along the plains, along the valleys, along the gentle slopes, it cannot walk on the hills. And it makes sense that you guard the entrance to the city where the valleys enter. And so it's just the topographic map of Bangalore just suddenly put a lot of things to perspective. I encourage you to find out how high is your house? What's the altitude of your office? Go out there, log on to topographic-map.com and play with it. It is absolute fun. Now let's look closely at Mahadevpura Valley. And I've highlighted the four tanks and the four water paths, which by now you should be familiar with. I've got the Agara tank, the Belandur tank and the Vartru tank, which are the main big tanks. But I've also got a couple of smaller ones. Mahadevpura tank, Dodana Kunti tank, Nallur Haldi tank and Shilavanta tank. Now look closely and see what I've done. I've added a few more locations and their altitude. So right on top, we have the high grounds at 940 meters. But as you come here, you have Silk Board at 885, Damlur at 888, Tin Factory at 885, ITPL is pretty high, 902. And Warthor, of course, is the lowest at 865. So let's do a little thought experiment. Let's reimagine our city. Let's imagine our city is a giant water park with lots of water slides. But essentially what happens is you have several high points and all the slides eventually end up in one big pool of water at the bottom. Makes sense? And so we were looking at four slides. The slide from Silk Board, the slide from Damlur, the slide from Tin Factory and the slide from ITPL. Which slide do you think is the most fun slide of all? It's four water slides which are all starting at roughly the same height and all ultimately end up in Varthur tank. Obviously the most fun slide is the one with the biggest gradient, the steepest slope. So let's figure that out together. Now just imagine this is a cross section of any part of Bangalore. And what happens when it rains? All the water flows down. So several hundred years ago, this is how the topography of Bangalore was, that when it rained, water flowed down the slope. Now what did we do? We decided to catch the water in the valleys and so we erected these obstructions or dams through man-made effort and created tanks so that when it rained, this is what happened, the tanks filled up. And then in the summer, we planted paddy and other crops on the downstream side of the bund and we released the stored water from the tank using sluice gates to irrigate our fields. And what happened if it rained too much? The tanks overflowed. Now, let's put some numbers to that. Let's assume that this highest point is 902 meters and the lowest point is 865. That gives me an elevation of 37 meters over a distance of about 4 kilometers. Some of you may already be guessing which area this is. Wanna guess? So this area was called Pattandur Agrahara and this area was called Varthur. And on the way, you had a place called Nallur Halli and you had a place called Shilavanta. Now let's just fast forward to today. Patandur Agrahara has become ITPL and in all the valleys just behind the Bund, we've built buildings. That's a very good way of understanding what's happened. So let's just see what happens when it rains and a raindrop lands in ITPL. And the raindrop lands right here and flows straight down, downhill all the way to Nalur Halli. It jumps over the buildings over there and heads straight towards Shilavanta Kere. Again jumps over and very happily lands in Vatsur. That's one happy raindrop. So for those of you interested, you can see the exact altitude at the inlet and the exit point of each of these tanks. It's just fascinating to understand the gradient. So you can see the ITPL slide is just 4 kilometers long and almost falls over almost 40 meters. In contrast, the silk board slide and the Dumro slide are like a long lazy river ride. They're almost 12 to 15 kilometers long. There's a fall of 10 meters till Belindu tank via the KGA, where they can literally play for a round of golf and come. And then the raindrops can slowly drift across the Belandur tank, which is over two kilometers, and then gently fall another 10 meters to Varthur. And so you get the drift, 
that the water slides from Silk Board, Dumlor and Tin Factory are long lazy rides, whereas the ITP ride is a steep one. And the essential point I'm trying to make here is that gradient matters because it affects the speed at which water comes. And when we have a heavy rainfall event, this is of critical importance because it decides how quickly the water comes upstream, downstream. We'll discuss more about that in the next part. But the main lesson of this whole chart was Bangalore is not just an up and down city and we have a waterfall. No, we have an up, which is steep. We have a down, which is gentle slope, but we also have many slopes of different gradients. And all this put together make for a rather complex situation Perfect for a fun water park, but very difficult if you're trying to manage storm waters. One thing you must have noticed about the Mahadevpura Valley, my favorite valley now, is that it is larger than the old city of Bengaluru. And not only is it larger in size, it is also a very gentle undulating slope. And all the water that flows through the valley on either side are the flood plains or the overflow zones. And if you speak to anyone who's tried to cultivate paddy, this is absolutely ideal. The water overflow that stays for a long time. And in a sense, Mahadevpura in the past used to receive rain from the cloud and have paddy farms. Today I'm told we have data farms sending stuff back to the cloud. And so my message to all you folks out there in Delhi and Mumbai and Chennai and Kolkata, which I call flat cities, we are actually an up and down city. We have highs, we have lows, we have a lot of fun slopes. We got gradient and gradient matters. And my challenge to all my fellow Bangaloreans is this. Please find me a one kilometer stretch of road in Bengaluru that is absolutely flat. There is no altitude variance from one end to the other. Use the app and find out. And if you do, please post your answer in the comments below. I'm waiting. There is one last absolutely crucial information that just stunned me when I first heard it about how old these tanks are. I mean, if I asked you how old they are, you may say 200 years, 300 years, maybe 500. Would you believe they are over a thousand years old? I'm serious. Agara tank has a written history of over 1,100 years. And I know all this because inscription stones have been recovered near the site. They've been interpreted and they talk about the dates when these tanks were actually created, who created them, the purpose, etc., etc. It's just fascinating uh, and the trouble is most of us don't even know this and all of us in Bengaluru owe a huge debt of gratitude to a team, a team of Uday Kumar and other passionate individuals who are part of the mythic society and it's a project, it's more a labor of love called Inscription Stones of Bengaluru where they are meticulously identifying, documenting, interpreting and preserving hundreds of such stones that are found all across the city that we call Bengaluru today, which actually captures the story of our city. And one of the most important stories that I've been able to get out was that Bengaluru was part of an ancient, but extremely sophisticated, perhaps one of the oldest rainwater harvesting systems anywhere in the world. And unfortunately, due to our indifference and callousness, we haven't tried to understand it and we have almost destroyed most of it over the past few decades. This was a feat of human engineering over the centuries. And this is something that I'm going to talk about on my next episode when I talk with Sir M. Vishweshwaraya, India's finest engineer statesman of the 20th century and a son of the soil. He was born a few miles downstream from Varthur. And I really look forward to meeting him because I'm going to ask him what would he have done to help protect Bangalore from floods? And maybe there's something we can learn from him. So until the next episode, no, wait, wait, wait. You know, it's been a crazy week for me since I started these videos. Uh, a lot of people are contacting me. They think I'm some kind of expert. I am not. I'm just a regular Bangalorean who's curious, who's trying to find out about why my city floods. And whenever I find something out, I tell you. And so now when anyone asks me, how are you? My answer is high and dry. How about you?